welcome back to another GGF video and today we're going to be taking a look at the Lian Li PC-011 Air Edition chassis. Now you've probably already seen our time that's build we did in this case. If you haven't, I'll throw it up in a link up here or in the description down below. But yeah, we've done the time that's build and now I've finally gotten around to doing a review on this case. Now, I'm not really going over the whole case, every aspect of it, sort of SSD placement, hard drive placement, power supply length, motherboard support, because this case is exactly the same as the PC-011 dynamic chassis that Lian Li released earlier this year, I'd say a few months ago. I have done a review on that case, I'll throw that up here or in the description down below for you to check out. But this uh, review will be sort of basically covering the water cooling features on this 011 Air Edition chassis. Things like uh, radiator support, has it changed at all from the 011 Dynamic? Because the actual uh, chassis are exactly the same from the Air to the Dynamic. It is the same internal frame with a few little tweaks and of course the 011 Air does have better airflow at the front. So we'll jump in and we'll have a look at the case. As the name states, the 011 Air is simply a more airflow alternative to the already launched 011 Dynamic where we see vented mesh panels on both the front and top instead of tempered glass found on the O11 Dynamic. Apart from that, both the O11 Air and Dynamic share the exact same internal layout. And yes, as mentioned before, GPU support will be limited depending on how wide your GPU block is. We covered this in a previous video and worked with Lian Li to create a spreadsheet outlining which GPU blocks will fit widthwise in the chassis. In short, the max GPU width will fit in the chassis before failing the side panel is 159mm wide with the GPU block installed. Other refinements include the whole front assembly being pushed forward slightly. This now allows slightly wider radiators to be installed in the back in the side section. Specifically, now EK radiators can now be installed back here without any modding. While talking about the front, I guess this is the main difference in the two versions. Now being mesh instead of tempered glass, there's now support for mounting a front radiator or fans. Support here is up to a 360 or 280mm radiator. Thickness will depend on how long your GPU is, but a 45mm thick radiator with fans will have no issues at all. But bear in mind, if installing a 360mm radiator at the front, you will limit both top and bottom radiator locations to 240mm radiators max. Also, installing a radiator in the front will limit radiator support in the side section. You'll only be able to fit fans in the main section and then the radiator in the back section. Back section radiator thickness is up to 45mm max. Top and bottom radiator support stay the same at both supporting 360mm radiators and the top supporting 60mm thick radiators. Bottom thickness is basically unlimited and depends on how many PCIe slots you are using. As you can see, there's more than ample spots for radiators. You just need to carefully plan where you want to use them. For our build, because our EVGA Hydro copper was too wide to fit horizontal, we had to go with a vertical mount solution. We then decided to go with a 360 60mm thick radiator at the top and a 360 45mm thick radiator in the side mount position. I then decided to leave the front solely for fans to bring in ample air to the chassis. Doing this also provided plenty of room for a reservoir and pump. Included in the O11 Air are five dust filters. Yes, five. One for the PSU, one for the side radiator, one for the front, one for the top, and lastly, one for the bottom. These are all magnetic and work well. Now, pricing for the case, you're looking at roughly 130 US dollars for the standard edition and then you're looking at 148 US dollars for the RGB edition which doesn't change anything on the case. The only just includes three Bora Light RGB fans and these just run off your motherboard's uh, software, the RGB software, to sync the fans up. And obviously I didn't use these because I went with a zero RGB, completely no RGB at all. Now I'll just talk a little bit more on the build I did because I did have a lot of sort of feedback questions about the build. The number one thing I get asked the most when I do this black tubing, uh, yes it is standard black, uh, sorry it is standard clear acrylic or PETG, it, it, it doesn't matter and I just simply paint it black. So what I do is I do all the bends, all the layout, fit it all so it's absolutely perfect. Then I simply pull the tube, uh, all the tubes out and then I just put a bit of tape on each end so no paint gets inside and then I just grab a just a cheap matte black spray paint. You can really do it any color you like, any type of gloss, any type of finish but I prefer um, as matte as I can get and even these are as matte as I can get but they are still a little bit glossy. Um, another thing I got asked a lot is um, I saw it on the Lian Lee page as well that it's sort of a bit silly using an air version chassis for a water-cooled build. Now, to me, 
I think that a water-cooled build needs just as much, if not more, airflow than running a standard sort of air-cooled system with an air-cooled GPU and an air-cooled CPU. Because you've really got your radiators can go in a few places, so airflow around those places is vital, especially areas like the front, the top, and the bottom. So if you've got no sort of ventilation on the front and you've got a radiator at the front or at the bottom, there's no intake, you're really gonna be sort of starving those radiators to cool them down, then the rest of your loop is going to heat up. So in terms of uh, in saying that, I went with the fans purely on the front because it was getting a little bit tight to put a radiator on the front and then fans and then have a radiator on the side. Like as I mentioned earlier in the review, it does get very tight. So I decided to go with full uh, cool air going straight in and that'll feed out to, to the top and out to the side. And then e even down the bottom, because of the pressure of the case, it will be uh, sucking in some air through the bottom as well. Uh, moving on to some other areas and also one thing on having such a good airflow case, I can run lower RPM fans, although I did go with the uh, 3000 RPM EK Furious uh, Vata fans, but that's all I could find from EK in the black. I really do like those fans, so I went with them all around to keep the black theme going, but you could really drop the RPM down and you can run this system nearly quiet. Uh, another thing I was impressed with was be able to fit a 60 millimeter thick radiator at the top. Now that's pretty impressive, it just fits in there. It was a tight squeeze with the uh, EPS cables. And then I do have the EKPE uh, 360. So that's a 40 mil thick radiator on the side, I believe. And that actually does fit. Now that's one thing that didn't fit in the L11 Dynamic, only because the front on the air, as I mentioned earlier, has been slightly pushed forward a bit. So that means your IO cables, uh, just another thing to mention, the IO on the O11 Air is exactly the same as the front IO on the Dynamic, so I haven't covered that. But yeah, on the inside, they have pushed it slightly forward a bit, so you can now fit the slightly wider EK radiators in there, which I've got one on the back, and then the 60 up there. Then apart from that, I went with the EVGA X299 Dark. I went with a full uh, delitted CPU, the actual direct die, so I didn't put the IHS back on the CPU. And then I went with the EVGA 1080 Ti. I went with the Ti Hydro Copper in the time that's built, but I have had to swap that out to just the non-TI Hydro Copper because I needed to use that for a, another build, which is probably why this sort of length is on a little bit of an angle because the two different cards, I think they're a millimeter or so different, so I didn't really re-cut uh, this tube and all of that. And then moving on to the reservoir, everyone's been asking about this. This is a Barrow Boxfish. I really like these. I've gone with the black one to, uh, to sort of fit in with the rest of the case, and that does have your temperature sensor. And then once again, the Barrow little flow meter as well. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it on this build. Very, very high performance system. I think I got the 7900X running at uh, 4.9, just under five gigahertz. Uh, with the direct die, I think I had it 1.33 volts and it was maxing out at 65 degrees. Now that's pretty express, uh, pretty good for an i9 and then this, uh, the GPU doesn't even get warm at all. I think 35 to 40 degrees was the max. But yeah, that's pretty much it on this review. Sort of something a little bit different, just uh, focusing really on the water cooling support. I haven't really covered sort of pump and reservoir mounts. There aren't really any dedicated reservoir spots on this case because the back sort of side is really for a radiator. Like I've done here, I've just mounted it on the DDC pump and just sort of stuck it on that. You can use uh, fan brackets for a reservoir and the bottom is full of mesh. So you can just uh, find a spot there and secure it in a DDC or a D5. But yeah, that's pretty much it on this video. I wanna thank uh, Lee and Lee for sending this out to do this build. I wanna thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for next time.